Hey, hi everyone. It is June 2nd and I'm joined by Eddie Dolmans and I wanted to get Eddie back on because uh, as you guys might know, every morning I go through all of the news and I put together and construct a bit of a macro outlook for the day. But one thing that I don't look at too closely when I'm get, seeing more attention being paid to is the meme stocks that seem to be back in fashion again. And I did see last night that GameStop were up about 12%, AMC were up about 23%, BlackBerry were up about 15%, which are obviously spectacularly large gains for an intraday session. So I wanted to get Eddie back on to explain basically what, what's going on, Eddie, here with these meme stocks. Is this round two or what? Well, it certainly looks like round two, which is it's quite surprising, actually, because, you know, when it happened with GameStop, it's almost a year ago, I think. Um, but, it's, you know, it's happened a few times in, in various different stocks and yeah, different meme stocks and things like that. And then cryptocurrency. But when it first happened, it was almost written off as a one time event, you know, speculative excess. This will never happen again. You know, the retail against the hedge funds. But it's happened again. Uh, and as I probably mentioned in the previous video, of course, this is just the era, era of cheap money, Fed liquidity that's been pumping in. But if you remember, one of the big functions of last time was that everyone was at home, right? Mm -hmm. And it was lockdowns and it was, you know, the depth. I thought, of the I thought it was crisis. a lockdown stimulus check, double whammy, but these things uh, seemingly are, are ending. Absolutely. So, you know, you, the US is almost open, particularly in, in some states. The UK is opening up. Vaccines are going well in, you know, the UK and the US. So it was kind of coined as a stay at home. You know, everyone's on their phones phase. Everyone's bored. The c casinos are shut. But this is actually now turning into a bit of a, an everlasting theme. And actually one on a serious note, because a lot of this isn't serious, but on a serious note that this is actually a, a market structural thing that looks like it's here to stay. So for all serious investors, retail traders, you know, this, this is something that you need to take uh, into account, I think, from now on. Yeah. Um, so one of the things I was reading was about this guy called, I'd never heard of him before, or his firm, Jason, Jason Mudrick. I'm not sure if I've said his surname right, but Jason Mudrick was telling the company and this company AMC, the cinema operator, that they should basically take advantage of this wild rally and, and sell stock to stay in business. So what's his role in all of this? I mean, I've read a little bit about their fund, but can you explain? Yeah, so this is, again, where it gets a little bit uh, dark. So the whole premise of this retail thing is David versus Goliath, right? It's the the small fries against the big hedge fund, you know, taking advantage of them. And like we saw with the Melvin Capital blow up, you know, that that worked in some capacities. But of course, it's quite naive to think that only retail are pushing these stocks up, right? Of course, opportunity draws attraction and all these hedge funds are now jumping on these momentum strategies, making a ton of money. So it's really turned from, you know, retail you know, David versus Goliath to the hedge funds are jumping on it and making a ton of money. So it kind of defeats the object. This is the one bit I don't really understand from a psychological perspective. But Mudrick Capital uh, basically bought uh, a ton of uh, stock from AMC. So what this basically means is AMC stock is up 1300% year to date, right? 1304%, a huge amount, right? When a stock goes up so much, you can do you can obviously raise debt at any point, but you can also issue shares, right? And this is a private sale to Mudrick Capital, who are a buyer of those shares. What this does for AMC is it basically raises liquidity, right? It gives them cash to then obviously offset all of the damage that they experienced during the COVID crisis. Obviously, it's a cinema company. Almost, uh, I was listening to a few. Uh, kind of retail investors, they don't know what yeah, AMC even stands for. <laughs> they don't even know what the company does in some capacity, which is pretty amazing. They just see the ticker, um, but basically shores up their balance sheet. And it was coined as in order to make acquisitions in the future. So it's M&A activity, giving them cash to acquire company, shore up their balance sheet, all these different types of things. So, so there's a few ways to kind of look at this. Adam Aaron, which is a CEO, uh, this is a smart move by him, no doubt you know, the equity is up so much, it's cheaper for them to basically raise that capital because they can get more for their money, basically. Um, right. So he's been quite active on on Twitter. Uh, he's basically, you know, uh, in... So, so, so hang on a minute, he, so he wins, Mudrick wins, 
who loses here? There's got to be someone who loses, right? Because this, surely the stock's got to come off and some of the retail money's going to get hit, but then the stock bounces back up by the close or who's the exactly. loser in that transaction? Exactly. So his tweet was, in our view, this is not mindless dilution, but rather this is a very smart raising of cash so we can grow this company. To many of you on Twitter, to grow your company. That's quite funny. <laughs> Watch out, naysayers. AMC is going to play offense again. Here we come. So he's definitely playing into it. It's what I would do, of course, um, in that. So he's kind of playing into that. We're all in it together. Mudrick, when I did the, uh, a LinkedIn post on this, it was really interesting because, um, you know, it looked like, you know, they're in it. Mudrick, they're a big believer of this company. A couple of hours later, they then sold their whole stake and said this is massively overvalued. So, which is insane, right? That the SEC would allow something like this. You know, there it's a private sale, and then they literally sold on the first day uh, after you know uh, investing in it. But again, the, the hedge funds are winning. Who loses is it's always going to be retail, and it's not going to be all of retail, right? This is going to be mm. people that are making huge sums of money to pay off their mortgage and you know changing their life, pay off their student loans. But it's the ones that then buy at the top. That then, or that, so the hedge funds sold that position. Who are they dumping on? Of course, it's the retail traders, right? So, of course, they're the ones that are, are losing. So, AMC is the winner. Adam Aaron, the CEO of AMC, is the winner. Mudrick Capital is the winner. All those hedge funds that are jumped on this momentum strategies are the winners. Some of the retail will be winners that have made that huge amount, but it's, it's obviously the people they get dumped on at right at the top, which happened with GameStop and it happened with AMC. Uh, yeah. In the yeah. Past. So it's interesting. It's like you said, going full circle. It used to be David versus Goliath, but the narrative has kind of changed now. And that it's just a new realm of hedge funds, again, utilizing the situation for their benefit, which we know they're very good at. Of course, it's, it's just seizing on opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. And it, unfortunately, it is those people that are going to get hurt. But let's kind of, again, take a, a look at the structure and you know, it's, it's, it's insane when you look at the stats in terms of, you know, why this is happening and all the pops and all the squeezes. But it, I think it was one day last week, AMC call options nearly traded as much volume as the SPY, so the S&P 500. So AMC was oh up there goodness. with uh, SPY, which is <laughs> just to even comprehend that this is, you know, um, imagine how much. ETF volume and how many holders own and trade S&P, uh, the SPY ticker, uh, you know, to have that call option volume uh, of AMC up there is huge. Yeah. So what this means from a structural perspective is when they're making markets, and when I say making markets, I mean the market makers, the liquidity providers that are making markets in this stock. They have to delta hedge. Um, what this means basically is when uh, retail, they buy options, right? The market makers are short those options. They then have to hedge their positions by buying the stock, right? So they buy AMC stock, they're, they're short the options, right? That's how they hedge their delta risk, basically. As the stock then pops, you know, for fundamental reasons, but also the technical ones, then there can be short squeezes, like we've seen in many capacities. Lots of hedge funds are short still. You know, there's, a, mm. I think, you know, a ton billions out short, um, like there was with GameStop. Uh, then when those stops get run, then obviously that pops. So there's the short squeeze element. Then the market makers have to buy even more stock because they're short the options. And when the stock goes up, then their, their risk basically goes up. So they then need to adjust uh, their risk. Um, then basically as they're adjusting their risk, the market makers then need to hedge that risk even more. And then right. that's where the gamma <clears throat> squeeze happens. So you've got- so you're, so you're telling me we can go to 2000% on the year. So the funny thing about <laughs> this was there was, a, I think it was a TikTok or a video, whatever. Mm. And the guy was like, oh, you know, AMC can go to a thousand dollars a share, which is 25 trillion. <laughs> If you, if you do the share price of $1,000 times the shares outstanding, that gets you to 25 trillion, 25 times Apple. So this is where <laughs> the, the use of equity valuations and multiples, whatever, mm. from retail, the unsophisticated mm. kids, is they just see an arbitrary number, right? 100, 500, 1,000, you know, 
it can yeah. go anywhere, just like you know Dogecoin or whatever. Um, mm. But that's where the lack of knowledge comes in, right? Because if you think that AMC is going to be twenty five times larger than Apple, not going to happen, right? They're just picking a number. They don't understand market <laughs> cap, so uh, that was a, a pretty pretty funny observation. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, look, I think that gets us fully up to speed. But um, any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment below. I'm sure Eddie, Eddie will be happy to explain. I know there was anyone who's new, a couple of bit more sophisticated kind of wording and theory there. But Eddie, I'm sure, is, is happy to help. So just, just let us know in the comment section below. All right, Eddie, thanks very much. Thanks, Anne.